Now let's talk about sensitivity analysis, the fourth agenda of this lecture. In the real world, conditions are dynamic and changing. Even when an optimal solution is found, we recognize that things can change and need to understand the room for improvement. Sensitivity analysis is a method to find out how sensitive a solution is to model assumptions and data. For example, if a firm realized that profit per unit is not $5 as estimated before, but instead it is closer to $5.50, how will the final solution mix and total profit change? Or if additional resources such as 10 labor hours or 3 hours of machine time should become available, will this change the problem's answer? Such analyses are used to examine the effects of changes in three areas, contribution rates, uh, technological coefficients, and available resources. Depending on these three changes, sensitivity analysis will change and give us uh, different answers. Look at uh, this finding. For example, we know that uh, we have an answer uh, after running uh, you know, linear programming using Excel, final value that maximizes our profit is 30 and 40. And uh, in the uh, constraints here, we see the final value, optimal value is 240 electronic time available and 100 assembly time available. And you will see here shadow price, right? So, so 240 means we will use 240 hours and 100 hours for assembly time uh, of, uh, to optimize our solution. However, shadow price says if we, we use one more electronic hours from 240 to 241, that will increase our profit by one and a half dollars, $1.5. That's what uh, shadow price means. And also, um, it says allow will increase, you know, you cannot just uh, infinitely increase your electric time available, but up to 60 hours. In other words, up to 300 electric time available, then uh, shadow price or the profit will increase by one and a half dollars. Similarly, you can decrease by 40 uh, uh, electric time available from 240 to 200. Uh, then at that time, the shadow price says one and a half dollars of profit will decrease as you are decreasing electric time available. Similarly, assembly time available says the final value, optimal value is 100. However, shadow price says there's a half dollar of shadow price, meaning that when you increase one, one unit of assembly time available from 100 to 101, then uh, uh, the shadow price or the profit will increase by half dollars, right? So, uh, and it, you can increase it by 20 more of assembly time. So from 100 to 120. Similarly, allowable decrease is 20. So up to 80, you can decrease your assembly time. And this information is available and that tells you, oh yeah, you know, that I have some room for changes and which is better for me, which will maximize my profit. That is the decision that you will make as a manager or suggest to your managers as an analyst. So let's take an example of a high note sound company and try to understand this sensitive analysis more concretely. Let us take the example here and the company manufactures quality speakers and stereo receivers products require a certain amount of skilled uh, artisanship which is in limited supply. And we assume that uh, X1 stands for um, uh, uh, speakers and X2 stereo receivers and uh, products require certain amount of uh, uh, constraints. Uh, for example, um, we have uh, two constraints here and electrician's constraint says 2x1 plus 4x2 is less than or equal to 80, meaning to produce one speaker, you need to spend two hours of, of uh, uh, X1, which is stereotype, two hours of electrician time for, uh, for uh, speakers, and, and X2, four hours of electrician's time for 
uh, zero receiver. And 2x1 plus 4x2 is less than 80, meaning that uh, the uh, resource you have for electrician's time is 80 hours. That's what you are saying here. And for the second constraint, you have hours of audio technician's time. Uh, the total available audio technician time is 60 hours at this point, and it takes three uh, technician's hours for speaker and one for uh, stereo receivers. So that's uh, what these two constraints say to us. And given this situation, we find that uh, you make $50 of profit for um, speakers and $120 for stereotype. So you make much more money in making stereotype receivers rather than um, uh, speakers. So following the five-step procedures that we learned, we need to first draw constraints, right? So uh, we will have to, you know, work on it and find the intercepts for that. You plug, um, uh, you set x1 0 and solve for x2, and the same goes for x1, and then you will find this, right? So 20 and 40 is your x2 intercept and x1 intercept and connect them together and here you have electrician's uh, constraint. The same for this second constraint, set 0 for x1 and solve for x2, that's a 60, and x2 is 0, x1 is uh, 20, so 60, 20 over here and connect the dots and you have the second constraint, audio technician's constraint. And notice that it's all less than equal to, right? So meaning that it's going to be below area and the uh, uh, shaded area is the common area um, and that's your feasible region. In other words, any points on this feasible region you can uh, produce. Any points outside of this feasible region you are not able to reach because it's not feasible at all. And if you solve for it, then you will find that the optimal point is 0, 20. This point uh, among these four uh, corner points maximize your profit. Um, the reason is quite simple, right? Because uh, you make a lot more money in making X2 than X1. So that's why it's better for you to produce X2 only than X1. So that's what it tells you. And the maximum quantity that you can make is 20 X2. Therefore, your maximum quantity, uh, maximum profit is going to be $2,400. Now, you know, if we uh, look at this, uh, let us think about the elect electrician's hours used. Since the optimal point is zero speakers and 20 receivers, we can plug them into the electrician's time constraints as I have done here. And we find that uh, it is 80, right? In other words, you are spending the maximum resources allowed for electrician's time. So in other words, there's no slack, therefore this is binding constraint. Uh, you cannot do anything about uh, about this constraint. This is the maximum resources that you can uh, utilize. There's no slack and it is binding constraint. O additional units of a binding constraint will generally increase profits. Uh, how about technicians of constraint? Look at this constraint for technician. And if you plug these numbers in there, then you find that it is 20. In other words, you are spending only 20 um, technician's time out of 60 that you are allowed for. So there are slacks in these constraints given this solution. Since the allotted budget is 60 hours of technician time, there are 40 hours of slacks for this optimization. Additional units of a non-binding constraint will only increase slack. Although you add more uh, to this constraint, it's going to only increase the slacks. So it's not that helpful. Right, that's what we can see in this example. Now let's consider uh, three changes in sensitive analysis. analysis. The first one is <clears throat> changes in objective function. Uh, there are three cases 
to consider changes in objective function, changes in technological coefficients, and changes in the resources. First, let us consider changes in objective function. In real life of problems, contribution rates, usually profit or cost, in the objective functions fluctuate periodically as to most of firms' expenses. For example, these days, oil prices have soared up because the demand has exceeded the supply. Graphically, this means that although the feasible solution region remains exactly the same, the slope of the ISO profit or ISO cost line will change. When profits, uh, uh, it is easy to see in this figure on the right uh, that the high note sound company's profit line is optimal at point A, as we saw, right? The profit line is over there. And this is the maximum point. Um, but what if a technical breakthrough just occurred that raised uh, the profit per stereo receiver X2 from 120 to $150? So you have more profits uh, from stereo receivers, even more than before, from $120 to $150 how is going to change your profit or your uh, solution. Um, since this is the changes in objective function, you know, uh, what happens is that it will change the slope of the objective function, right? And it, it gets uh, even more um, uh, stiffer for you to make profit with X2 rather than X1. So in other words, I'm sorry, less steep than uh, for X2 because now you make, before you made a, a lot of money like this, but now X2's profit increased. So it's going to go down like that and, and uh, uh, you can change it uh, as ISO profit line. And as you change, you see that uh, 0 0.20 is your um, uh, maximum, right? So before it was like that and then you were moving like this, but now a little bit less steep, and then you are going to go like this. And the, the solution is the same. However, the profit will increase in the case. On the other hand, if profit's coefficient was overestimated and should have been only $80 instead of $120, and how would that change, right? So before it was like this, but now it's like that, right? And then you want to find which one gives you the, uh, uh, the best optimal point and you find that you know at 20 and you can go above and we see you know this point B is giving you higher profit than this point because the slope of objective function changed therefore the optimal point has to change to B and uh, uh, this is this point is going to give you uh, the profit and by the way, the solution is 50 and 80. So um, that's uh, the solution that we see. And uh, similarly, you can change things around. Your objective function was like that before. If uh, you know one one's uh, uh, objective function changes, then the slope changes. And depending on the slopes, you do this ISO profit line or ISO cost line adjustment and see where the optimal point lies. That's what you need to do with the changes in objective function.